Please send a brother. No. All right, hello not, everyone. Not really My name is Chef. Welcome back to the Witcher Circus, so and today. Over. I'm gonna be watching a match between Carollo and Mr. D, so this is in the loser's bracket. I think it's a bit... it's a bit low, isn't it? But yeah, it's in the loser's bracket. They were waiting for me to grab my snacks before starting this match. And Carollo comes in with the Halo comp, while Mr. D himself comes in with Silac Brot. But a, a kind of an interesting variation of it, because he is running the Crusader in position 2. Which means that if he manages to get the Bullark off, which, yeah. well, he, he might, but great, at least not immediately. If he manages to get the Bullark off, that Flash won't, won't really be a target, ever. Which means that he can freely well, drop Proclaims, means that Bastard. with uh, oh, wait, that's, that uh, with protection of the Bread. other characters it's gonna be kinda of difficult. Okay, you know what? I was gonna have <laughs> I was gonna have Carola's voice, but I can't focus with his voice here, so I'm gonna mute him. So yeah, I I, I can't focus on commentating when I hear his voice overlapping mine. But yeah, it looks like Mr. D will be guarding the Grave Robber, which is a very interesting move because she's stealth, right? And there could be a reclaim dropped on her. So it is an interesting move indeed, and uh, what did the Bounty Hunter do, right? The Bounty Hunter went for the Come Hither, the Crusader went for the Stun, the Jester must have gone for the Battle Bound. Yes, he did. You will need that accuracy. And now the Yarblast can go for a Flare, that would get rid of the Mark, and that would mean that he'd be able to go first and possibly just get the one shot by going first. But he might miss it, he might miss both the Flare and the sniper shot. It decides to just go a bit crazy here, just disregard the flare, just go sniper shot on the Crusader, which has her claim on him. And the pit fighter's helm. So I'm not too sure if that's the wisest move for Carmelo here. It is what he goes for, but there's no mark, there was no nothing, and he has to deal with the prot. Like Crusader naturally has plus the reclaim, so it feels like a very unintuitive move to make. He goes for the double stun, gets the double stun, meaning that that Crusader will not be able to drop the Bullark, at least until round 3, which really sucks for Mr. D, obviously. If he managed to go first, he would just go Bullark, and I mean, I saw this in one of the showcases that I was doing for, I think it was the Halo comp, is that if this matchup's basically unwinnable, <laughs> if if uh, if the Silent Pro team goes first, it just drops the Bullark of Light, and then all your characters have to deal with that prod. the Jester just absolutely hates it, and I mean, yeah, no, the finish him is really not too ideal here. I don't know why Carollo is playing Halo comp, it's not his usual kind of team. And uh, he did say that my snacks were distracting him, he did say that my pudding that I bought was on his mind, because I sent a picture, and, they, and these freaking guys, the, the ones that you see over here, they started looking up the, the brands of the picture, they started measuring the items that I had compared to the, my foot, so it, it, it got me a bit paranoid for a second there, but, uh, but yeah, they, they didn't manage to find out too much because the shopping cart was kind of blocking <laughs> most of my leg. But yeah, they called me an emo because uh, because of my clothing choice, but you know, anyway, anyway. So there is a great sniper shot there onto that Crusader, I still think having gone for a mark for, uh, for death and then the sniper shot on the Crusader would have been better because the result would have been the same but now he would be marked. So Carol could immediately insist on uh, on getting rid of that Crusader but it, there's 12 regen on there, there's still a lot of protection and the... F oh, there's the resistance now. There could be a block of light being immediately dropped and that flashlight is getting closer and closer to his heels and once his heels come down it's gonna be really difficult for... Well, if he manages to get the heal off, it's basically GG, because uh, Carol will be taking pressure, and Mr. D with the heal off will be basically at full HP on all his characters, and, uh, <laughs> and Carol would have gotten nothing out of this. Yeah, I'm unsure how good Mr. D is at the Salak Brot, it's not really something that I've seen him play too often. I, I I think he's changed his meta style, because he used to be this guy that ran with the occultist Chef Tressim, he used to be this guy that ran with the Winter Boys DOT, and he didn't bring either of those teams to this tournament, so he's he's kind of having to go for a new playstyle, basically. But that, not to take anything away from him, because he's still a fantastic player, he won the previous tournament, and I have no doubts that he's still in the run for winning this very tournament too. So the Bullock of Light is being dropped now. Mr. D kind of 
deciding to take a bit more of a safer approach here because he could have clicked that Crusader and gone for the block of light, but there could have been just an immediate uh, sniper shot, bringing him down way too much. It would have been dangerous, right? It would have been dangerous, but by taking the guard away from the Grave Robber, especially after the Crusader turn from Carollo has been used, means that that Crusader from Mr. D is just able to stay completely safe, finally drop that block, and just move on from there. Now, what he's most scared of at this moment, <laughs> excuse me, what he's most scared of at this moment when he's clicking his platform is the fact that, you know, Garou still, ha still has the stun and he still has the finale, so he needs to think about what moves he wants to go to actually handle that problem. He still has his own self-heal and he still has the mana arms to guard, and I think this is the correct move for Mr. D. So there's a 15% chance the stun doesn't go through, sadly that's not going to be the case, but now he can change the guard from the men at arms to the flagellant, but he's considering whether he should do it immediately, because if he does that, the Grave Robber will still have one turn of mark on her, meaning that she's probably going to eat a crit sniper shot, uh, and for a lot of damage, because that Arbos has a crit buff, so there's a lot going on right now in this, in this very match, and his Crusader has so much regen on him that he's completely safe at this point. He probably has like 18 points of regen on him at this point. Do not pass! That's one thing you want, You don't want to do. It looked like a pass over there. He decided to go for the for the Grave Robber Panic Darts and gets a very juicy crit on it, meaning that the Arbos goes masochistic, which isn't the best thing you could have hoped for, but it's not the worst either. Uh, she might move forward and might cause a bit of a... Uh, uh, a bit of quite annoying disruption against Mr. D here. Also the fact that his flagellant, well, Karo decides against actually just immediately finaling that flagellant. I do believe he has three buffs, so he would have 14 to 25 damage. Now against 10% prot, that would be 13 to 22. Against the amount of prot that Mr. D has, which is 30, that would be closer to like 11 to 20, I believe. Yeah, it would be a bit... Maybe lower than 11 to 20. I'm, I'm not too sure. But yeah, it would be kind of low. It would be kind of low. So the chance of actually getting a kill against the 14 damage isn't guaranteed. Or rather, against the 14 HP isn't guaranteed. Mr. D will have to drop the heal regardless with his Crusader if he wants to... If he doesn't want to drop to the store and eat the Dirk Snap Death Blow here, so that is something that he has to that he has to care about. And you kind of just have to ask the question here. If Carollo gets a kill with the finale, is it good enough for him? Because usually with the Halo comp, you want to get a kill without dropping the finale, and then you have the finale for the second kill, then you only have to deal with two characters and you're already snowballed out of uh, you've already snowballed to oblivion and you basically can't lose. That's the idea with the hill comp. You have a, a lot of accuracy, so you don't have that problem. You have a bypass guard, you have anti-DOT, and you have that snowball pressure with the finale. Plus the pressure from, wow, crit heal, very unnecessary, but crit heal, I think he could have dropped the reclaim on the Grave Robber, honestly, but he's decided against it, and it looks like the finale will be dropped onto her too, isn't that Flagell taking enough damage to drop to the store here? He kinda is, he kinda is, I mean, what, two kills here, and the Crusader's all the way in the back, like, it it doesn't feel good at all! Like, how could it go so poorly for Mr. D? It could not have gone any worse than this on the turns passing. It could not have gone any freaking worse than this. I think he reclaimed once too many times. When you have the heal, and he did have the heal, when you have the heal, you don't need to reclaim some more just because, because now that Crusader just has way too much HP, the guard wasn't changed whatsoever, so the, the men at arms wasn't able to do anything to kind of just save this uh, terrible position that uh, uh, that Mr. D was in, and now it's just, it's just a complete disaster, the Crusader can't do anything, all the men at arms can do is bellow, but he doesn't have bellow trinkets, he has numbing instance and transit cure all, which for this matchup haven't been helping because Carollo hasn't had the need to actually stun the men at arms. Mr. D never gave him the opportunity to, <laughs> to stun the men at arms. So now, I mean, the Arbalest is masochistic, she might oof herself, and yes, it will take eons, and I mean eons, for the Crusader and the men at arms to die here. Especially considering the Bulwark and especially considering the bleed resistances, but... But there's no pressure. There, there's like a bellow here. And then there's a bellow there. But there's no reason.
real pressure against Corolla at the moment. So he is in such a driver's seat at this point that it's almost uncanny how much of a driver's seat he's in. Oh, he's gonna go for the gamble and it pays off! He heals for five and clears the debuff. Meaning that that Arbalist will actually be able to uh, use her sniper shot while out of this store and probably do a lot of damage because the Man at Arms only has 30 procs at the moment. So his guard buff, or rather his buff from the guard right now, goes for the harvest here. And you know, even though it's the 30 and the 25 to get it, he's gonna get one of those bleeds eventually, right? Gets kind of a min roll on the sniper shot, which is a bit unfortunate for Corolla. But it begs the question after this match, right? Because this match. It could still be one for Mr. D. Not, it's not impossible, definitely not, but uh, after this match, in terms of what teams they will have, this is probably the team that Corolla didn't want to play into, <laughs> and it's the team that Mr. D wanted to play into. But it hasn't worked out well for, for either of them whatsoever. I'm surprised he decides against going for the heal once more, especially considering the Arbals is masochistic. It, that could have been a bit of an oversight here. And especially considering that the Crusader is going to move forward, so he could have stunned the Crusader rather than going for a 50 50 on the Man at Arms. So Carol might be getting a bit ahead of himself, and uh, this might cost him the match. We're very far from it costing him the match, but hey, there's always a possibility, you never know. Mr. D is going to end up going for the heals here rather than moving forward. Which, fair enough, uh, he doesn't want to just get stunned for free, but regardless of what happens, those heals aren't good enough, and uh, the pressure probably won't be enough. He's gonna go for the caltrips here, and honestly, I respect the move. It's not what I would have gone for. I would have healed the Arbals once more, this time it would have been for sure guaranteed to not leave her at this store, but honestly, I mean, it's an Arbalist champ, she's still gonna freaking hurt. Uh, even at this door, even Bello debuffed, uh, even against 30 prot, it's an Arbalist champ, she's still gonna one shot, or very close to one shot. So yeah, that Men at Arms is already almost at this store, but that's gonna be another reflection coming down, and that's the Arbalist at 179 stress. So the, the, the stress has been uh, has been compounding against uh, against Corolla here. He's gonna go for the heal, but is it enough? Is that DOT finally running out? The DOT from the Panic Guards finally running out on the Arbalist? We don't know just yet. But now if he doesn't heal the Men at Arms, the Men at Arms will die. Uh, if he heals the Men at Arms, the Men at Arms will still die because of the, <laughs> because of the sniper shot. So it's a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situation here. I think that Crusader will manage to get one Zealous off, but I'm unsure if that will be enough to actually get the W here. He's going to flare, so he doesn't do zero damage with the finish him. Look, Carol, I think you're being a bit paranoid. You need to be at this door fearful and have like two mellow debuffs on you before finish him starts doing zero damage. But you know what? He doesn't take a risk. He doesn't take the risk, he gets the guaranteed kill, and now it's a 4v1. And is the Crusader going to go virtuous? I don't think so. He didn't take extra stress from that park. So now he is... Oh, he's going to go abusive. <laughs> it's almost a virtue at this point. Uh, actually, no, the extra stress comes through, but the Arbos will most likely just heal herself, and that will be perfectly fine. It goes for the Sunny Boat. That's a 7 because of that... Uh, actually, because of that abusive and the crit. Even against 55 prompt. It goes for finish him now, and the... the the Crusader is still DOTing down. That bounty hunter is still just totally chilling. Just just waiting on the Crusader dropping to zero here. Just waiting for him to drop to zero until he eventually just goes for the kill. And yeah, it's just a complete disaster for Mr. D. This is the absolute worst outcome. I mean, the worst outcome is a loss, right? But just losing those two characters in such a brutal fashion, it's it really, really is surprising to see this because it was very unexpected. I would not expect Corolla to win this match going into it, but he pulled it off. He freaking pulled it off. He managed to beat what would be this team's hard counterpick. And uh, this just goes to show that regardless of how bad the counterpick is, you mustn't surrender because it is always possible to take off a win. So let's go straight into a match number two. Okay, let's look at the decks real quick. This should be... Oh, come on, Corolla. <laughs> show me the deck. Ah, wait, let me ask him. Uh, can you show the deck again, please? Oh, God. No, no, no. Hang on. Okay, here are the decks. So, it seems that Mr. D has, indeed, the side prod. He has the Shep Stress 3. He has the Septic Tank, WD, and Jester WD. So, quite a cool deck from Mr. D. While Corolla has the Halo Comp, 
Oh, very odd that he brought Salak Prot into into all that Corolo had here because it doesn't really look like Salak Prot would be, uh, you know, the the go-to move considering there's the Winter Blitz DOT, considering there's uh, those teams like that. But you know, it's a very very uh, very solid team that uh, that Mr. D was bringing. Both of them have it, so now we might see Corolo bring it. But uh, yeah, we just have to wait and see what the players want to do. Alright, and here we go, straight into a match number two. So, Carol is on match point to eliminate Mr. D from the tournament, and it's going to be Carolo's special or Carolo's dodge versus Mr. D's Jester WD. So, he has the snuff on that Arbus, he has the. He has the double stun. What does stun want to say? Every time he comes to play, he's always dealing damage over time. <laughs> yeah. So Tunk plays all these protection teams. We saw that in uh, in yesterday's video. He plays all these protection teams, but there's all these damage over time. He always gets counterpicked. Yeah, in this situation here, it looks like there's double stun abomination, there's double stun on the crusader, there's uh, the accuracy from the from the battle battle, meaning that he's just able to do things like this. Uh, really, the battle battle just gives uh, gives Mr. D a huge edge here over over Corolla because he will be able to go for those stuns where many stun teams would not be able to uh, into the amount of dodge that Corolla's team has. Now at the same time pulling this Jester it's a very... how do I put it? It's a high risk high reward move because now the Crusader can't go for a stun, right? But you can go for a Holy Lance, which might hurt a lot more than a stun and might result in a finale. Now, the size to go for a Holy Lance on the Arbalus, which, I mean, still misses the Holy Lance despite it being the Arbalus and not the Grave Robber, but... Would there, would there any good result out of that? Because Jester WD is the kind of team that doesn't have reach. It's a team that only reaches up to position 3, basically. It has a sniper shot to 4, it has the finale to 4, but it doesn't really reach the back. Uh, it's, it's not what it tries to do. It doesn't try to reach the back. It's not good at it. Uh, so going for that Holy Lance on the Arbos wouldn't really result in anything, because the match won't be decided on doing a bit of damage to the Arbos. The match will be decided on can Mr. D kill one of these characters despite their dodge? And so far it's looking like that's going to be a resounding yes. Unless there's a massive crit heal here, but there isn't. There's a heal for 12, which is kind of a high roll. Uh, well, it's a max roll on the with the healing trinket that uh, the Arbos from Corolla has. It is a max roll. This means that the Jester does 9 to 16 damage, and against 12 HP, if he does 9, 10, 11, 12, he doesn't get it. If he does 13, 14, 15, 16, he gets it. So that's a 50 50 to get the kill, not counting the crit chance. Now, goes for a stun on the Highwayman, lands the stun, which was expected, and uh, dodges the repulse because no vendetta has been dropped. And uh, that's quite an interesting dodge, not one I was expecting. <laughs> the Crusader dodging that. It is, it is indeed quite interesting, but this match will indeed most likely be decided on the Jester and the Grave Robber. Who dies first? Whoever dies first probably loses the match because it's going to be a snowball effect between these two uh, between these two teams. The, the Corolla decides to go for a lunge onto that Jester. He's not quite at this store and this just feels like a perfect, and I mean just perfect opportunity for a finale or uh, yes a finale but first a Manacles because the Arbalist hasn't used her turn the, I mean, the Arbalist from Corolla has used her turn, she won't be able to wear away the stuns. The damage would be enough to guarantee that the finale would be the kill, but uh, it seems like it seems like Mr. D has different plans. He gets to go first, meaning that he can risk it right now on the Dirk Stab. He has the accuracy, he has the finisher, he has the monkey spot, he has the battle ballad, and that Grave Robber only has 39 dodge. He might get a kill with the Dirk Stab, and he goes for it. He does not get it, and now he's left in such an odd situation, because do you go for the 75, and if you fail it, you lose the match, or do you go for the finale? And if you get it, well, you kill the Grave Robber, but you 
you go, you got finale, you know? <laughs> I mean, you kind of had to use the finale there after a dirk snap on a character that was probably going to die anyway, so it, it doesn't feel good. But if Corolla replies here with a heal, unless it's a crit, I have to say this would be a big mistake, but it is a crit. It is a crit coming to save Corolla in his time of need. And I mean time of need, because if that was a roll for like 10, that Jester just went for a Dirk Snap, he has 11 to 20 damage. You would have lost two turns on that, because the Arbos lost her turn, the Grave Robber lost her turn. That would have been a massive disaster had the Grave Robber not been crit healed. But now, at least she can trade back by putting the Jester to their store, and we might still be looking, or rather, we will still be looking at the trade of characters here. But the finale will have to be forced out of Mr. D. So if there was no crit, Ooh, the crit might change things. That is quite, <laughs> that is quite a big thing for Carola at this point. Uh, against Carola at this point, but yeah. Now we are in a situation where there might be pulls, there might be stuff happening to kill this Jester. Immediately dies to the 25. That is really unfortunate for Mr. D. Really quite unfortunate because with him dying to the 25% means that. Uh, he doesn't have to waste the Vendetta on the Jester, not really waste, but he doesn't have to spend a turn going Vendetta, he doesn't have to spend another turn going for another action to kill the Jester, and it also means that uh, Mr. D will not have a chance to just use his, his overpowering heals, which is what he wanted to do here. You get the finale off, and then your Abomination stuns one of their characters, while the Crusader heals and the Arbus heals. So that was the idea behind his play. I'm, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> I'm talking too much. I need to hydrate. I need a second commentator. That's what I need. I need a second commentator. That is uh, that is exactly what I need, but unfortunately there's uh, there's only the shepherd dog. There's only me, myself, and I. No one else wants to wants to commentate with me. No one wants to collab. Why do people not want to do stuff with the Butcher Circus? I read all of the comments saying that uh, saying that yesterday, and it, indeed it is a bit odd. I don't really think about it too much, at least most of the time, but uh, Butcher Circus is abandoned. I think I've come to terms with the Butcher Circus being abandoned. You know, I, I think that's just something I have to, I have to admit that. Uh, you just get to the point where you realize, oh yeah, there's no balance updates. Sometimes the game just uh, stops working for a week. Until <laughs> until you can play it again, I, you know, just uh, just the way what you say is right. But yeah, looking back at this match, now we're seeing the really the defining bad characteristics of Carollo's dodge, which is Pierce for nine, <laughs> Wicked Slice for eleven. And the thing is, if the if the situation was reversed, I would be complaining about the Wicked Slice and Carolla would be telling me, but you didn't go Vendetta. But the truth is, he didn't have time to go for the Vendetta. When did he have time to go for the Vendetta here? All his team is dying, he had to kill that Jester and he had to do the damage to kill the Jester. His, his Iron Man was stunned, he never even got the chance to go for that Vendetta past the Duelist Advance that he went for. Perhaps he could have gone Vendetta on the Jester rather than the Duelist Advance first. That, uh, that would have been a possibility, but that's just not how the team is played. Uh, he has to do this advance so he can then use the lunge. At least uh, that's uh, the general idea behind it. There will just be an absolution here with the abomination, healing him back up to 13 HP, which is honestly a big heal. And what I mean by big heal here is that one turn heal means that your opponent will have to use at least more than one turn to bring him back to zero, which is really, really bad here. And now another character dies for Carollo, and this just feels like we're gonna go into a match number three. So yeah, plus six to 12 damage, gets a crit on it, so uh, turns out the Abomination will have to be healed once more, either by the Crusader or by the, or by himself really, or by the Arbos, but he decides to go for the heal himself, there is no crit, and the Pierce very likely won't do enough damage here, but there is a crit back, crit into crit, such as the way of the Witcher Circus, but most likely the Crusader will just get a heal here all for free, and I mean, uh, ooh, that's, that's a bit of a risky move, uh, <laughs> wow, that is beyond me though, that is beyond me. How he manages to land the stuns and dodge the repulse. It's the second time this has happened <laughs> in, uh, in this match. Yeah, it really is. 
Um, which is surprising that he even went for that stun, honestly, because if the higher man clicks here, he still has his repulse back, so I thought that he would just go for a shot on the higher man and the heal with the Crusader to get himself some HP back, but... You know, he decided against it, but this is just a math situation. There's two heals on the enemy side, and another character to do stuff, and he has Battle Ballad. And if we know that there is something that is really overpowered, oh, that is, that is beyond risky, why do you go for something like this? Oh no, the Crusader still has his turn. Never mind, never mind. Crusader still has his turn. He goes for the sniper shot before the repulse comes back. But he can't really go for the hit on the higher man here, because if he does that, he might just die. Ah, uh, but considering that the repulse is still up, so he'll likely go for the manacles on the shield breaker. But here's the thing, that is one sexy manacles. It has 110 base accuracy, and it has battle ballad. It's a 130 accuracy stun move with 135% stun chance and 5 to 9 damage. And that's not counting A-bomb transformations, that's not counting A-bomb crit buffs, which both of them give him plus damage to some very, very high extent. So there will be yet another heal, and uh, this just feels completely hopeless for, for Carol at this point. There's just nothing he can do. He's, he's fighting math right now. He's fighting his math demons. He goes for... <laughs> that's the third time, man. That's the third time. How is it possible? How is it possible that that uh, Hyo Man just keeps getting hit with a stun? And uh, yeah, Sturdy Buckle, Sturdy Buckle Valio is just doing nothing for him. It's doing nothing for him. And this is something that I criticize him on because he sometimes just doesn't have the accuracy or the damage with his Hyo Man to win. And I feel like that myself too. He sometimes complains about the lack of accuracy. And if you look at the people that play Hyo Man in the Butcher's Circus, there's basically myself very rarely. There's Sergi, there's and there's Silac, right? Uh, Sergi runs him with the UEI sometimes, runs him with the Eagle Eye sometimes. I run him with the Eagle Eye and the Parrying Dagger. They're interchangeable. I run them uh, one or the other. While Silac always runs with the Eagle Eye Talisman. Meaning that all the best players are running higher man with accuracy trinkets despite his vendetta because his accuracy is just trash he needs vendetta and more so he's the only person that runs without accuracy trinkets on him and it really did not pay off here he didn't get any misses on the chester but the sturdy buckle just didn't do enough into a match number three we will go all right and here we go straight into a match number three and carollo is playing silac brought while Mr. D is playing WD. And here's the thing, I may have had a hand in this match, because I kind of told Corolla, what if you played Salak Prot? You know, it's a pretty cool team. And uh, he went, you know what, fine, Chef, I'll play Salak Prot. And, uh, and, you know, here we are, and he's playing against WD. Which is quite funny to me, because he said that just yesterday he was playing against WD with this team and lost. So I told him, well, that must have been misplaced on your end, <laughs> because you shouldn't lose that. And uh, it's a very slight advantage for the Sonic Prompt in this matchup, but it really will come down to whoever goes first, which in this case was Mr. D, so not too ideal. And it will also come, come down to... Oh, he's thinking of slamming the Crusader, that's really not what, uh, wow, it works, that's really not what you would typically go for playing this team, but it is what he goes for, and he does get the slam, which is a blessing and a curse here. It is a blessing and a curse because uh, it means that he can target the Crusader, and it means that the Crusader doesn't get the Blark of Light, but it also means that now he can't target the Flat One, and he has to deal with the Protection Heavy characters, which are the Men Arms and the Crusader, because they both have the Pit Fighter's Helm while the Reclaims are being dropped, and while the Grave Robber is just chilling, and uh, will drop, will soon drop a very big Panic Darts, unless Mr. D tries to rectify it by going for the Flare here, clearing one of the battle debuffs and the stealth on the grave orb. There's a very decent chance that he whips it, and that would that wouldn't be too nice. No, <laughs> that would not be too nice. That would just be a moment where you would surrender if you were Mister in, in a situation like this. So now his crusader will be getting marked here, which isn't too ideal to to say the very least that means that a big sniper shot might be coming the bellow will not save him and he might be going for another reclaim and honestly i believe that to be the move because you kind of have to accept that the arbals is going to one shot you 
you know, you have to accept that the Arbalest is going to get a crit, and she's going to one-shot you. You need to play in accordance to that. After the Arbalest gets a crit and one-shots you, what will you do then? <laughs> that's, that's the question. Now, there will be a crit onto this Flatrond, and he is stunned, and he won't get to act for round 3, meaning that if a slam happens here against that Flatrond, and the slam actually works, this might get very dicey very, very quickly uh, for Corolla because you won't be able to actually save the flash one. But it is a risk he took and we'll see if it pays off or not. Now, he's choosing who to hit, but there's really only one target here, it's the Arbos. He decides to go for the Bounty Hunter instead, which is really not a move that people that play this team go for. Mostly because you can get rid of the killing blows from the from the bounty hunter, sure, but you won't get rid of the heals that your opponents have, and that's really what you want to get rid of, because at the end of the match, when you no longer have that many stress moves, and you have like two stress moves, and you cause a heart attack, and your opponent manages to get a heal off on themselves, you just lose so much pressure, while if your opponent has no heals, and has no real source of damage, which is the Arbalus, the match becomes much, much easier at that point in time. So there will be a rage here, which is just one short of doing enough damage, which I would call unlucky, but honestly it isn't. Uh, it's just, it is it is to be expected at this point. He's thinking of <laughs> guarding or moving forward, or he's also thinking of moving back, perhaps, but then he'll just get stunned, which isn't too good. I think he should just bellow, but uh, it is it is up to him. He has to keep, um, he has to keep the tempo going, obviously, and trying to keep his characters alive, because this matchup is um, insanely cool. Uh, in my opinion, this matchup is one of the coolest matchups in the Witcher Circus. I love, I just love the dichotomy between damage and that's a heal that you kind of want to go for, but at the same time kind of don't, but he ends up going for it. Yeah, you, I love this dichotomy between the damage teams and the stress teams, where the damage team is slowly trying to crack through the stress team's defense while the stress team is trying to output pressure as it's defending. So it's kind of like in this... Um, uh, remember that uh, intro from Left 4 Dead 2 where one of the guys is like, uh, shoot or run, and then the other is like, both! I, I can't remember which ones they were, I'm terrible at names, but <laughs> basically that's the idea, it's both. You both shoot and you run. You're trying to be very defensive while outputting stress onto the damage team at the same time. Uh, so yeah, and that is what Carollo has to do here, and this is the team that is just built to do it, because it's not an immortal team, meaning that it can lose one of its characters and still definitely get to win if the output, of, or rather if the pressure trade is good enough, but it's not a go hard or go home kind of stress team, meaning that it's just going to lose one of its characters and doesn't really have too many answers. So it's really going to come down between the player's knowledge of the matchups and the player's knowledge of what characters to use at that one time to see who will actually be able to, to come victorious uh, out of this out of this match. And that's something that I, I just love, right? It's a bit nerdy for me to speak of it in such a fashion, but uh, it is it is the way I think of it. And uh, Corolla decides to go for a guard here on the Crusader, which I have to feel is a good move. Uh, he might get stunned, but he does have the stun resistance trinket, so if he gets stunned here it would be quite bad, but it would be three stuns against this side, and he resists it, making it already a very, very positive move. I believe his flagellant is dropping enough to the point that he manages to get the heal as well, so that would be absolutely ginormous. There is a crit sniper shot on there, meaning that the Arbalist will most importantly get the crit buff for herself, meaning that shooting the marks the next turn is going to deal even more damage. Uh, she does get to go first too, so there might be a stun coming down on this flash on, but it's a 35% chance that the stun comes down, and if it doesn't come down, a big redeem here basically brings Mr. D back to nothing. Uh, back to nothing, and one of his characters afflicted and dropping to their storm, right? So he's really, really, really got to find a way through. He kind of tried to go for the Rage and uh, that really important Abomination turn previously. Now he's changing marks onto the Men at Arms. I think he's already lost. I'm, I'm gonna have to be honest with you. If Carollo does not throw here, there is nothing that Mr. D can do to it. Uh, he's already having to change marks onto the Men at Arms at round 4 when his Bounty Hunter is gonna be afflicted and dropping to this store. Uh, Carollo goes for the correct move, which is getting that affliction through, is using that Grave for going for any bellows and, uh, and giving 
uh, Mr. D any sort of that pressure. The only thing that can save Mr. D at this point is that Arbalest crit buff. Maybe she gets just enough damage to surprise Corollo's, uh, Corollo's defensive capabilities and just get stuns and get one shot so he should not be getting them by all means. Manages to get the stun this time around, so kind of really fair outcome in, in terms of the actions. The first 50-50 does not go through, and the second 50-50 goes through. So really, it does not get any fairer than that when it comes to stuns applied and stun resisted. So goes for the sniper shot onto the men arms. He ends up taking a very fair amount of damage indeed. And now it is Corolla's turn to move. He has run out of regen on this crusader so he now he must pick what he wants to do he still has the redeem available with his flash one so that's most likely what he's going to be planning to to use here and he might be thinking of going for a heal and just getting some hp back i think that he could be moving forward but at the same time, then he would become a stunning target for that Crusader, and uh, you know that wouldn't be too nice. Obviously, he's going to become a stunning target for the Crus for uh, the abomination instead. So, uh, fair enough. He was going to become a stunning target so regardless of uh, what he did. And now, Mister D kind of, uh, rather Carollo kind of has to go for the heal here because if he doesn't, he's going to get stunned and die, and that would be really, really bad because. Well, obviously, if the flange one dies here, the Crusader is still stunned. And while he has output a very decent amount of pressure, he hasn't really done enough for someone to just say, yeah, yeah, he wins. Uh, he wins out of, uh, out of the amount of pressure he's on. He's basically hurt the Bounty Hunter a lot. If that were the Arbalest, the Arbalest would be dropping to this door and she would not be able to shoot here. But no, he went for the Bounty Hunter, so it's going to be much more difficult than uh, it would otherwise be. Also, talking about the pudding that I <laughs> that I bought, I am eating it now. Because I had run out of energy. 32! Into 35 prot, no crit required. Decides to go for the guard here. This is a very, very crucial guard, because... If the guard comes down, and the stun doesn't come through, the kill will have to be through a cow trips. But the problem is, that Crusader has 65 prot right now with the guard. The stun does not come through. The stun does not come through on the 50-50. There's another stun chance, there's a 45 now, fails the 50-50, but there's a 45 still. If he doesn't get it, uh, Carol will not get to a go first, but the Crusader will still be guarded, meaning that he will be able to drop a regen this turn, and potentially just regen out of this door to not do that. Well, he, he goes for another panic dart here on the bounty hunter, which is completely unnecessary because he was already dropping to this door. He should be he, he should be stressing the bounty hunter out, but he should not be wasting the damage that he has with an wow. He should not be wasting the damage that he has with the panic darts and the blight to go for moves like that. He goes for he can go for a rain of sorrows here. It's generally a good move because it could apply a death blow. And he could regen, but he's probably just going to use the Crusader for a self heal. And oh my god! He gets the kill onto that bounty hunter! He gets the kill onto the bounty hunter after both stuns failing. And this just feels like uh, Mr. D is abandoning all hope at this point because he does not have a kill. He does not have a confirmed death blow character anymore. He has a, the teeniest amount of pressure on, uh, on that Arbos, but. And that man at arms is still just chilling, probably at 80 prot at this point. The grave robber is beyond perfectly fine to keep spamming those panic darts, and I mean beyond perfectly fine. The sniper shot does 8 damage with the crit buff for plus damage. Dear god, I've never seen something go this poorly for a WD. Like, this is genuinely the worst thing that could have happened. It has to feel like that. I feel like this is not Mr. D's turf. He's been knocked out of his turf. He's not a WD player. He went for the rage onto the Crusader. He slammed the Crusader, right? and that's kind of just... It, it, it 
it's made it so he can't win, basically. He can't guard break that Crusader, he has to go for these chancy stuns on their men arms And he, you have to avoid chances the most amount possible when you're playing WB. You have to go for the guaranteed moves, right? You have to go for the guaranteed value if you ever want to win reliably with this match. And oh my god, the 85% stun chance fails! And it just, it's just getting worse, it's just getting worse every action that happens. Oh my god, now there's a great panic that's on the armless. And I'm sorry for Mr. D, I'm sorry for Mr. D. This hurts me to watch because I love this team that he's playing. I love the team that Carol is playing as well. I like Mr. D as a player too, I like Mr. D as a person. I can say the exact same things for Carollo. And uh, it just feels kind of sad that one of these players will have to get knocked out of the tournament. But uh, such is the way of the tournament, right? Not everyone can, uh, not everyone can pass through. So the only way that can, that Carollo could still lose here would be by not guarding the, would be by possibly not guarding the uh, the flash ones at this point. That's basically the only way he could lose. Uh, if he doesn't guard the flash one here, he might get hit with a really big stun. Following the stun, he'll drop to their store, and then he will. Uh, well, yes, following the sun, he'll drop to the sword and he'll heal with the Crusader, but then there will be another hit, and uh, Mr. D will be able to go first, so he might get a death blow if he's very lucky. And that might be enough to put him back into the match, but I mean, even if you're looking at this from the best possible angle for Mr. D, it still looks like a complete disaster. And, oh my god, another 85% stun chance just fails! And the terrible fail that is, just two 15% going for Carollo, and oh, it's just disastrous. Waste a lot of stress on that panic darts. Please, Carollo, be better on your panic darts. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you know, I mean, it's perfectly fine, right, at this point, because he also wants to use his men at arms for other stuff, but he, he's wasted so much dot and so much, um, wait, I'm not, okay, I am, I am muted, thank goodness, I thought I might not have been muted, the way he was uh, he were putting his, his cursor over there, that would have been a disaster, but yeah, a stun comes through here onto this, uh, onto this flash one, so he might still die, and this is <laughs> this is what I had mentioned earlier. The flash one might still die between the bleed that he has to himself and uh, and the bullet that is about to come down. But oh, oh, he pushes the men at arms and the flash one, meaning that now the guard comes down. And yeah, no, it's not gonna work out too well for, uh, for Mr. D, not whatsoever. So the, he's back to his original positions with <laughs> with the team, with the Salak Pro team. He's back to the original position with the Crusader and one where he should be. And uh, he's free to drop the bulwark now. And honestly, at this point, if your opponent doesn't want to surrender, you you make them abandon all hope. That is that is the game plan here. And I mean, what can Mr. D do? There's no more marks. He goes for the flare and he surrenders after dropping the flare. So that is going to be a big GG, and well played to both players. He was, he was put in a position where he was just unable to break through. Carollo played the defense spectacularly, and sadly, Mr. D will have to drop out of the tournament. But big GGs to both players. And anyway, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!